Hi again then guys and welcome to another installment of Beards and Cars. For those who have not clicked through to the series before, you'll probably notice it has a fairly long runtime compared to a lot of my other videos. And the reason for that is because this is a more podcast-esque layout where it's more of a discussion rather than just a rapid fire countdown or a tune video or a review. And it allows us to have more of a discussion in the video itself, in the comments, and even this video topic is a community suggestion. And to be honest, with the amount of episodes that we've done in this series, I'm surprised that this one hasn't come up before, either by me thinking about it or by it being suggested. But it's a very good topic. It's a very important one, a very significant one to GT Sport, and also just to the future of Gran Turismo in general. And that is which cars, and I've narrowed it down to the 20 in particular that I've picked, deserve and are also most likely, because that's a very good combination to have, because those are two very different things, to go from being standard cars, for instance in GT6, to being full premiums. Now for those who are unfamiliar with the difference, maybe you joined Gran Turismo more recently for instance in GT Sport, most of the cars in GT Sport, the vast majority, are full premiums. They've got HD graphics, they sound the part, they look the part, they have fully detailed interiors. Some of them still don't, the Vision GTs in particular, but from the outside, they are still HD. In Gran Turismo 5 and 6, though, in particular, and a couple of the smaller offshoot games, but those in particular, there were a combination of two, and standard cars were the ones which people would often refer to as PS2 era where the graphics were not very good, they did not have interiors, it was just black inside, you could not do very much to them visually, they were just lower quality cars, in effect. And it was always a very strong point of contention, as it should be, that you would have these cars that looked like they were from Gran Turismo 4 in a game that was on the next platform, the next console, multiple years later, two games down the line, and they still look like that. So these are the 20 vehicles from that era even as recently as Gran Turismo 6, in fact, that I believe should and can have a premium update. Now, at least some of these, I think, will come true in the coming months, or however long Gran Turismo Sport remains the main game. So, let's get straight into the list. Kicking us off, first of all, I'm putting a classic Alfa Romeo. The Sprint GTA in particular. I think this car is a prime candidate for premium update treatment. I think it's almost definite that it will happen because it's just such a significant car. Alfa Romeo has a strong presence in Gran Turismo Sport already, in road racing, Group X Classics, Group 3, Group 4. It's a decent amount of range for the brand. They've always been a part of Gran Turismo. They've always had great cars in there, the 8C, the 155 DTM. Now, on the point of DTM just briefly, I have not included any DTM cars even though technically all of those were non-premium, and of course I would love to see them all, but I've not included those because we just don't know if DTM is going to come. And I did an entire episode about that, so you should watch that if you're interested. But for now, I'm sticking, as I said, to the cars which not only deserve to come back, but the ones which I think have a very good chance of coming back. And to me, this one does. Now the GTA would be around N100, I think it would probably be more expensive than it was. I can't recall exactly what the price was before, but it was a six-figure car. Doubtless it still would be. Maybe something like uh, three or 400,000 credits. That wouldn't surprise me. But it kind of leads on, at least for me, directly into the next pick, and that is the BMW 2002 Turbo. These two cars have always been similar to me in terms of the proportions, the look, even the performance. The Beamer is quicker, and it's an iconic car for the brand, of course, one of the OG high-performance turbo cars on the market. I think this car, again, has a very, very good chance of seeing full premium update treatment and being brought back. That would not surprise me in the slightest. And to be honest, I could almost imagine them coming in the same pack. I don't think they will, but I could certainly see that. My next pick is easily the car that appeals to me the most of the entire list, and I know to many of you as well, the Chaparral 2J. It was technically what we could call a semi-premium, as a couple of the open-top cars are as well, like the Formula GT, some of the LMP cars as well, the prototypes, where technically they do have an interior, but it's very bad quality. It does not look good at all. The 2J is one of those. 
I think that the precedent is there for this car to be brought back for two reasons. One, Chaparral is still in the game anyway with the Vision GT, so that's a good start. It means they already have rights to some degree to the brand. But also, they have the perfect excuse to just dump this car in Group X and then really not give it a second thought. Now, even if that happens, which it will, I would still be glad to have it back. But it means that they could put it in the game and they wouldn't really need to worry about the car being OP because you wouldn't be able to use it all that much. So I think that the 2J is a prime candidate, definitely my favourite car of this whole list. I'm hoping that it comes back, but of course we'll have to wait and see. Next up I'm putting a car which, again, I'm kind of surprised that we haven't already seen return, and it hasn't had a premium in any of the games, in any form, the Charger. The Dodge Charger. Now there have been a number of different versions of the Charger featured in Gran Turismo, but I'm going to say the 1970, the Charger 440 in particular, which is my favourite version of the Dodge Charger in the real world as well. To me it looks infinitely better than the split grille, which came, I believe, was that slightly earlier, the 69 Charger with the split grille in the centre. I think this one looks way better, it looks beefier. The Super B also has a decent chance, but I would have thought that if they bring one back, it would probably be this one, because it's the more iconic shape. Next up, I'm putting another car which I think is kind of a, a sleeper pick, where not a huge amount of people would necessarily be clamouring for it, but in a similar way to some of the others, even the other MR2 that was added, I think this one could be as well. The older MR2, the 1980s supercharged MR2 G Limited. I could fully see them bringing this back as a premium. Again, it's just got that kind of vibe to it. I would say that this is probably one of the most likely, in fact, of the whole list. There were a number of different versions of the MR2 featured. Now we don't have any from this generation. We had the GTS added from the later 90s. So again, it all just adds that circumstantial evidence to make me think, at the very least, it could happen. I would say it's fairly likely to happen, but we'll have to wait and see. Next up, I'm putting a car which is going to have its kind of twin brother come up later on, a rally icon, and again, circumstantially, I would say that this is getting more and more likely, even with the recent 1.36 update with the Stratos coming back. The Peugeot 205, the T16 in particular. Now, of course, we'd love to see the rally car, the Evo 2, but we've seen no precedent whatsoever for rally cars coming to the game. We've literally, as far as I can recall, had none at all, which is kind of weird, but there you go. Road-going ones, though, homologation cars, we have seen, and the Stratos is a perfect example. To me, this Peugeot, at the very least, has a decent chance and seeing it as a full premium would be very cool as well. Plus, personally, I actually prefer the road version. I think it's a really cool little hot hatch. Next up, I'm putting another muscle car in a similar vein to the Charger. This one's one of the biggest muscle cars around, one of the most iconic from the whole franchise. I remember seeing it first in Gran Turismo 2 when I was a kid, and interestingly, it falls into a similar category to a couple of the other cars here, wherein you could call it kind of a semi-premium where it has updated graphics from the outside, but it still didn't have the interior. And that is the Plymouth Superbird, the Roadrunner. Massive car, iconic look. It's up there with the Daytona Charger, which of course is a variation on the theme essentially. But I think this one has a very, very good chance of coming back, especially now that however long ago it was with the update, we had the XNR gear come back to the game, bringing Plymouth back. I could fully see them bringing this, maybe even alongside the AAR CUDA, which was already a premium. That would be an interesting little twin system of bringing it back. We'll have to wait and see, though. I think this one has a very strong chance, and I know a ton of people would be really happy with that. And again, I could fully see them bringing that alongside something like a 69 Camaro SS, or a Charger, for instance, in premium update form. I could see them doing that for sure. The next one is the car that I mentioned earlier, being the kind of twin to the Peugeot 205, and that is the Renault, the Renault 5 Turbo. Again, I'm going to say the street version in particular. I love this car. I'm a huge fan of the Renault 5 Turbo. I like it even more than the Peugeot, even though it's not as good, it's not as powerful. It's rear-wheel drive instead of all-wheel drive, but it's iconic. Renault has a good showing in the game currently, to the point where it's actually one of the only brands in the game to have a needless duplicate. Those two different Clios, which is so dumb, but there you go. 
So Gran Turismo and Polyphony are clearly still putting a lot of importance in the brand. The new Megane, how good the Megane is in Group 4, etc. The RS01s in both forms as well. Renault's got a pretty good showing in the game, but not so much in the classic field. We've got the Gordini coming, so once again, more and more circumstantial evidence of Renault being favoured, at least to some degree, so that wouldn't surprise me at all. Plus, let's remember, of course, that Gran Turismo has ties to Nissan, and Nissan has ties to Renault, so not too much of a surprise that they'd be fairly friendly with them. Next up I'm going to put a Celica, but the hard choice for me was do I go with the Celica ST185 or do I go with the ST205? Now my personal favourite Celica, because I'm not a Celica fan, is the ST165, the old, old school all-wheel drive version. However, I think that the 185 and the 205 have probably the better chance because, funnily enough, we had premium rally versions of this Celica, the 205 in particular, but the road version wasn't. Now, personally, I prefer the 185. It has more of an old-school rally vibe, but I think the 205 has much more of a chance. So, it's interesting with Toyota how that's going to go. Toyota was kind of dropping out of games for a while, it could seem, but now we've seen the Supra come, the FT1, a number of things in the Gran Turismo field, so I could fully see this happening, and I think it's enough of a fan favourite to say it's fairly likely that a Salika will probably arrive in the game, and I'm going to put my money on a 205. Next up, staying actually in the world of rally icons, the Ford RS200. Another semi-premium, it had the premium kind of body, but not the interior. I think this one's pretty much definite. I mean, why wouldn't you bring an RS200 back? I could definitely see this happening, especially now again with the Stratos, with a number of others. I think this one is probably one of the highest on the list in terms of likelihood. I could easily see them bringing the RS200 back. It'd have tons of liveries done for it, Monster Energy, the classic blue and white, Pikes Peak style ones. Yeah, I think it would be a fan favourite, a ton of people would love to see it return, it would be very useful for Rally as well, so yeah, I would definitely see this one coming back. Next up I'm putting two Civics, I haven't put two of any other car back to back on this list, but I think with the Civic it's just kind of too much to ignore, and that is the EK and the EP. Civic Type R's. The EK to me has easily the biggest chance because although technically we saw that in an update form, we haven't seen that return to GT Sport. So should it be on this list? Not really, technically, but I think there's room for them either to bring over the premium EK or to update the other version of the EK, the 1998 one. Personally, I prefer the 97, but the 98 is a possibility for sure. The next one though, the EP, is arguably more significant from a premium update point of view because we did not have any premium versions of this one and it's still a very popular car. It's a very good performance car, so again, I would say I would prefer the EK to return even, but this one I think would be more significant for the franchise. Next up, I'm putting maybe my second most wanted car of the list. In fact, actually it probably wouldn't be, but my number one supercar to have premium treatment for sure, the XJ220. And the reason why I say it's my number one supercar pick is not because it's one of my favorite supercars, it's actually not, but because of the likelihood and the importance of the car in particular, that's why I'm saying that. The XJ220, I mean, of course, why wouldn't you bring an XJ220 back to Gran Turismo? I think there's a very, very strong chance of this happening. We saw the SLR return recently, we've had the Diablo come back, the F40, the McLaren F1. We've got so many of its peers and other cars which would go well against it. So yeah, to me, I would be surprised if they didn't bring the XJ220 back. It's been a part of the franchise for a long time, the road car, the race car. So yeah, I could fully see that happening. And I think it would potentially be more useful now than it has been in a long time. Because as far as supercars go, it was never that quick in Gran Turismo 6 or 5, if I recall correctly. It was decent as a track car, very good handling in fact, but you still didn't see many people using it, which is kind of a shame. The next one I'm putting is maybe a little bit less obvious, but I could see Gran Turismo doing it because of the Japanese thing. They have a lot of respect, of course, for the classic cars from their company, or from their country, I should say. The Mazda Cosmo, aka the 110S. 
I could definitely see this happening. It would make a great little rival for a number of the other cars, some of which are already premium, like a Mercedes Gullwing or a BMW 507 if they were to make a return. But unlike those, this was not a premium. And of course, that's the whole point of the list. So I could definitely see this happening. I'd actually be pretty happy with that. I would like to see the Mazda Cosmo come back. It was a pretty nice little car. I used to use it occasionally, occasionally for cruises wasn't massively powerful you could tune it up to like 260 horsepower or so but it was good it was good for what it was sounded nice looks good kind of the og high performance rotary car from japan so yeah it's it's a significant car for a number of reasons and let's be honest mazda could do with a bit of bolstering we've got some good cars there but not a huge amount the rx8 isn't even in the game for instance so i think we could do with some more decent mazdas to use Next up I'm putting another JDM car, this one I've seen a lot of love for. Funnily enough, we've never had a premium despite the fact that there's tons of variants of the car, most of which were completely unnecessary. The Mitsubishi 3000 GT aka the GTO. Now I think that the 3000 GT has more of a chance of coming back than the GTO does, but it's a technicality. Either way it would be close enough to keep the fans happy. It's a very powerful, beefy JDM car on the the more purpose-built end of the market rather than like a, a tuned-up sedan or a coupe. This is much more of a purpose-built feeling machine, and it's a very, very good car. It's easy to sleep on the 3000 GT, but it's a really good Mitsubishi. It kind of combines, say, an Evo with a Supra. It's got the more low-slung, wide, powerful, talky vibe of something like a Supra or an NSX, but with the all-wheel drive prowess of an Impreza or an Evo, which makes it <laughs> kind of daunting to go up against sometimes. It's a perfect foil to stuff like the Skyline, potentially, and the only real downside to the GTO is the weight. It's a very heavy car, but again, that's nothing that tuning can't help with. I would say that this one has a very good chance. I think there's a very, very high chance of the 3000 GT in particular coming back. Next up I'm going with two picks back to back which are kind of the best rivals of the whole Gran Turismo franchise in terms of how strong their rivalry has always been but also how good each of the cars are individually from Nissan and then from Toyota and of course you know the Toyota I'm talking about we'll get to it in a second but first of all the Nissan R390. Now the question to me comes in whether or not it's going to be the road car or if it would be the race car. To me, I think that in the form of the Toyota, the race car is much more likely. But I think when it comes to the Nissan, I would say there's much more of a likelihood of seeing the Nissan R390 road car come back rather than the race car. Now, either way, I would actually be pretty happy because in racing form, the R390 has kind of touring car style handling. It's a bit heavier than a lot of the other GT ones, but it's very smooth through corners. It was extremely OP back in the day, especially in Gran Turismo 3, but it's a very good contender. However, the street car, especially if they stay consistent to the absolutely incorrect specs that they used to give it, it's not a 350 horsepower car by any stretch. It has 550, but for some reason they always gave it 350, which allowed it to utterly dominate low-level events. But to me, if they did bring it back and still gave it the wrong specs, it would be an amazingly useful car. Doubtless, it would cost at least a million, but imagine it on Blue Moon Bay. It would be a force to be reckoned with. And to be honest, even if it had 500 horsepower, you could still detune it to probably N400, and it would be one of the most OP things out there. Up there with stuff like the Porsche GT1 and the Mercedes CLK GTR, if they were to come back, they're just so fast by road car standards because they're barely even road legal anyway. But, of course, next up, that brings me to the Toyota, the TS20 GT1. Now, this one, I would say, funnily enough, has less of a chance of coming back than the R390 does, although I think if they brought either of them back, I feel strongly that they would bring both at the same time. However, as I mentioned just now, I think the GT1 has more of a chance of coming back as a race car than it does as the road version. Because the road version was outstanding very very cool car but we just never really saw it happen the race car has been in most of the games in the whole franchise so that wouldn't surprise me at all if they did that and it would be brilliant group one of course 
But again, the reason why I'm not so sure is similar to with the DTM cars. We don't really have a strong showing for GT1. The closest thing to it is the McLaren, the F1 GTR, and that's not exactly the same kind of GT1. It's a very early example. Before we saw the silly GT1s, as they're often called from the later 90s, but I would of course love to see the Toyota. I think this is probably number two on my whole list, second only to the Chaparral. Next up though, I'm keeping actually a car which I kind of forgot about momentarily. This would be my number two, not the Toyota. The Peugeot, the Peugeot 905. This one I'm not sure about. It's one of the riskiest picks in terms of predictions because could I see it happening? Absolutely. Will it happen? I just don't know because we've got the 908 already so it's not exactly essential whereas with stuff like the 787B coming back from Mazda they don't have as much of a modern day equivalent. Of course they've got the Vision GT but it's not really the same kind of thing so I could fully see this happening I could see this coming back and having fierce battles with the Group C cars and I certainly hope that it does it's an iconic car and a fan favorite but I just don't know. I would say this is one of the riskiest picks to predict because I would say it's just as likely to not come back as it is to come back. So we'll have to wait and see. And lastly, I'm putting another interesting one in a similar vein to the Superbird. And this is the other car that I was referring to earlier on, the Mitsubishi FTO. The FTO was another one of those cars that had a strange kind of no man's land middle ground setup in Gran Turismo where it had the premium body and for some strange reason it even had customizable bodywork. You could give it a carbon fiber body or, or bonnet I should say, but it didn't have the interior. Very strange when they do that and the Superbird and the FTO in particular were the two cars that had that very obviously compared to others. But again, I could definitely see this happening. I could see them bringing back the GP version R in particular, which is arguably the best one if you're going to go for one. So yeah, I could see that happening for sure. So overall, that is my 20 picks. Some are definitely more likely than others. I would say some are pretty much a dead cert. Some are very, very gray. Will it happen? Won't it? Who knows? I would say probably the least likely of the whole list is probably the Peugeot 905. I would say the most likely of the whole list could be the EK Civic because Technically, if they do bring it back, I think they'll bring back the one that was already a premium. So that's kind of a grey area of should it even be on this list at all. But whether they facelift or, or update, not facelift the 98 version, or bring back the existing premium 97, which is what they probably would do, I think that one's pretty much a dead cert as well. Especially with the DC2 Integra coming back. I would say the Mitsubishi 3000 GT has a very strong chance as well, but again, that would be a full update to do, so we'll have to wait and see. Overall though, that's it for my 20 picks, vehicles which I think a lot of fans would be very happy about from a lot of different styles, be it JDM, uh, classic racing cars, all that kind of stuff. Oh, and actually, just before I forget, I realised that I read one wrong actually on my list. That is not my full 20, that's actually 19 cars. How could I forget? The GT40. That is the final car on my list, the 1969 Golf GT40, because if you think about it, it kind of makes sense for them to do this because the Ford GT is Kaz's favourite car. It's always been one of the heroes of the franchise, especially in GT4, and we've definitely seen a very, very strong leaning towards updating and also just bringing back the high rollers. One of the very few high rollers that we don't have back is this GT40. And to me, I love this car. It's always been my favorite of the high rollers of the 20 million credit club. And I've actually gone on record, I think, on the channel, if not in forums as well, as saying that it's the only car of the whole franchise that technically I actually don't want it to be a premium because I love the way it looks. I like the bad graphics because it reminds me of Gran Turismo 2 in a very nostalgic way. Plus, to me, this was probably the best sounding car of the whole series. And I know that there are tons of great ones, but I just love the way the GT40 sounds. So that is actually my top 20, not 19 as it was just now. So yeah, I'd love to hear your picks down below. There were definitely even more, which I had to cut down. I could have made it like 30 instead, but I didn't want to go that long. So as I said, I'd love to hear your picks down below, your honorable mentions. It doesn't have to be 20, it could be less, could even be more, I guess. 
But that's it for this instalment and for this discussion. Of course, I will see you guys next week. And ultimately, we'll have to look back at this and see if, and if so, how many of these cars actually do get the premium treatment. Hopefully, quite a few of them. But we'll have to wait and see. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.